Furina as the Hydra Archon is perhaps one of the most hyped up characters for Genshin Impact, and I bet you are going to be pulling for her. And if you are, then you definitely need to watch this to learn how to build Furina and how to use her. Let's get right into Farina's kit. Her normal attacks are pretty basic, but they have the twist that they're able to apply either the Ouija or Numa alignments, which is going to be good against certain Fontaine enemies. She is also capable of switching that alignment through the use of a charge attack, and which alignment you are will change her elemental skill accordingly. Speaking of said elemental skill, it's gonna depend on that alignment again. When you are currently aligned with Ouija, which is the standard, you are going to do damage mode, which will summon Horsey, Kingler, and Octillery to fight for you, who are going to continuously attack enemies during set intervals. The damage from these lads will be basically all of the damage of your kit. Her skill will also drain the HP of the entire team when it deals damage, averaging around 50% per rotation. The skill coincidentally also stops draining HP once you are at 50%. They will do this to increase their own damage, so it's important that you have a healer in the team. But as they say, no pain, no gain. And then you may ask, what does it do during Numa mode? Well, it's just gonna heal you. The healing's not gonna be that good, so for the most part I would just ignore this. It is good to know that it exists though. And then when we get to her burst, it's going to get interesting again. It's going to start a counter that when one of your characters loses or gains HP, it's gonna go up by 1 for every percentage of HP that is gained or lost. This is yet another reason why you want to build a healer with her. Farina is going to drain your entire team's HP, but if you heal it back, that is going to quickly stack up this counter. And the reason that you want to stack up this counter is because based on how full your counter is, you are going to be boosting your entire team's damage bonus and healing bonus. If you play her with a good healer like Jean or Baiju, this can easily stack up to 40% damage bonus, which is more than most Kazuhas will give you. Her ascension talents aren't going to be that special. Her ascension 1 talent is going to be healing a random party member if the active party member gets overhealed by a source that is not Farina's own healing. This healing is, however, quite minor, usually not even reaching 1000 HP. Her ascension 4 passive is going to boost her own damage and lower her healing interval based on her max HP, capping at 40k HP. The damage bonus stacks up to 28% and the healing interval reduction up to 16%. When it comes to your talent priority, it's relatively simple. All of her team buffs are from her burst, so level that first. All of her damage is from her skill, so level that afterwards. And as for her normal attacks, don't level them. It's literally not worth it. But now you may ask, what weapon do I put on my Farina? I know what she's gonna do, but I still don't know if I have a good option for her. Farina has many viable weapon options, but sadly, many of them are not free to play friendly, or they're just 5 stars. But let's start with her signature. It's going to be a massive crit stick which will boost your skill damage and HP percent, which is amazing for focusing on her damage. But I don't think you should go for it for a simple reason. Energy requirements. This weapon does nothing to address her energy economy, forcing you to run an ER sands. You'll also need to get plenty energy recharge subsets if you want to be able to use her in any team on the fly, which means that ultimately it's not that far ahead of the competition. Next up we have the Festering Desire. Yeah, you need to be ancient to have this. Having both an energy recharge substat as well as boosting your skills crit rate and damage bonus, this is going to be your second best bet. This is also when we start looking at 5 star alternatives like Key of Kajne Soot and Jade Cutter. Jade Cutter has similar problems to her signature and so does Key, but I overall value Key higher than Jade Cutter due to the team wide EM buff. Then we start getting into Battle Pass territory with Wolfang, simply a more offensive festering desire that completely gets rid of its energy recharge. And lastly, it's time to look at the true FTP weapon, being the metal pipe you get from fishing. Despite having low passive uptime, this weapon should help you with your energy economy while not being useless for damage. So don't discredit it and get that fishing rod out. Wait, shit, that's the wrong game. Here's a neat little sheet to rank her weapon options and see what your best bet is going to be. If you have found this video informative so far, I highly recommend subscribing. I make videos on Genshin meta and leaked characters and would love for you to be there for them. The goal is to reach 1000 subs before 4.2 comes out. Let's see if we can do it. When it comes to which set you want to use on Farina, it's very straightforward. Golden Troop. Please just use Golden Troop. There are of course other options, like any 2 piece 2 piece combo of Hydro Damage and HP, or 4 piece Mars Chassis Hunter. But the only hunter that will be present is me, hunting you down for not using Golden Troop. As for stats, you'll go for Energy Recharge or HP on the Sands, depending on if you hit the Energy Recharge requirement or not, 
which will we discuss after this. HP Goblet or Hydro Damage, whichever has better substats, and then Crit Rate or Crit Damage on your Circlet, whichever you need more of. As for her stat breakpoints, this is going to be important. For Ascension 4 passive to fully stack, you need 40k HP, so that will be the goal for HP, but if you struggle to reach it, don't worry. Anything between 30 to 35k should still be sufficient. For Crit, since she does have a Crit Ascension, requirements are going to be steeper. A 70% crit rate to 140% crit damage ratio, ignoring weapon stats, should not be too hard to achieve. Now for an interesting one, energy recharge. As a single hydro, assuming she catches the particles from a Favonius weapon, around 200% should be enough. As a double, 180% should do the trick, and assuming you're insane enough to go for triple hydro, 160% should be plenty. Her burst is very good, so these requirements matter a lot. However, if you're insane enough to pull a C4 just to make your energy requirements lower, it covers about a quarter of her burst, which means you need about 50% less energy recharge on average. For Farina against Yalan and Xingqiu, let's get into what people care about more, their Hydra application. In short, Xingqiu beats Yalan, and Yalan beats Farina. Farina's Hydra application is wildly inconsistent, and even when it does work out, it's still less than both of the other two. But is this an issue? In my opinion, not really. There are hardly any teams that require Xingqiu or Yalan levels of application, and those that do, just use double Hydra anyway. People said Yalan wasn't enough to support Hu Tao, but with enough testing, we found out that she is in fact enough, so only time will tell just how big of an issue this is going to be. As for her damage, Farina's pretty stellar. She does more damage in Yalan, assuming they're both using their second best in slots, being Fahonia's Warbone, Festering Desire. But then, as we give them their signatures, Yalan starts to outperform her. But this isn't considering Farina has AoE, making her better in scenarios where there are enemies grouped by a Kazuha, for example. Now this section is going to be relatively straightforward. Where can you use Farina? Well, any team with a competent healer. I'm serious. As long as you can compensate for Farina's team-wide HP drain, her burst buff is simply going to outscale both of the other Hydro units we were talking about just now. Where she will specifically stand out is with Nuvolet and Hu Tao. Hu Tao is already one of the best single target carries, and now giving her an AoE Hydro Applicator is a nice benefit to vape her burst on every target. Since Farina can buff the entire team, teams with multiple characters contributing to the team's damage will also appreciate her a lot like Raiden National. Normally Farina would not be able to keep up with Sheng Ling, but Electro Charge helps in this. And then, of course, there's Novalette. Do I even need to say anything? Novalette's own HP drain and healing will be stacking Farina's buff up extremely high. Over the course of even a singular charge attack and ball absorption, you'll have given Farina nearly 100 stacks. Combined with Farina's own HP drain, that is almost 75% damage bonus to the entire team. When looking at Farina's teams, you don't need to see which DPS she has good synergy with, but rather which healers do. Jean, for example, can run 4vv, which means any team that benefits from Viridus and Venerare can use Farina and Jean. Or look at Baiju, he's a Dendro character with off-field application, so she will work well in Dendro teams when you pair her up with Baiju. I specifically am ready to try out Baiju and Farina in Alhatham Quickbloom teams, replacing my Yalan and Nahida. Her constellations are, of course, also a part of her kit, so here I am to cover them. It's important to know what they do for the dolphins out there so that they know where to stop when you pull for constellations. Because if I've learned anything from Ultra Kill, it's that money can, in fact, solve all your problems. Her C1 is very strong. It just automatically gives her 150 burst stacks while also raising the cap by 100, going from 300 to 400. Just 30% team-wide extra damage bonus, very good for a C1. Having this C1 is equivalent to adding a Yalan's Ascension 4 to the entire team. Yeah, it's that good. Her C2 is an absolute doozy. It's going to allow your burst to stack way faster, and when it's cat, you just get up to 140% HP on Farina. Yeah, because that's balanced. Definitely not insane. This consolation means that any team can cap her burst. Hell, Novalet can do it in just a singular charge attack. C4 will generate around 16 to 20 energy for her per rotation, so it's good, but I wouldn't say it's worth a C4. As for her C6, it's another fucking doozy. 
you gain an infusion for about one full normal attack string that will have different effects whether you're in damage mode or healing mode. Damage mode will paradoxically heal the entire team when you attack, and healing mode will even more paradoxically drain the team's HP to make Farina do more damage. I definitely prefer damage mode here, as the damage you lose isn't very big, while you get a lot better survivability on the team. It's pretty weak for a C6, but it's a decent amount of front-loaded damage for speedrunning, I guess. The damage is going to be about half of a Yalan C6, so it definitely needs some help to be worth it for me. If you do want to get to this point, though, get ready to shill. Considering you made it this far into the video, I bet you like my content. And since you like it so much, why don't you drop a subscription? Maybe even like the video. Oh, and don't forget to comment how excited you are for Frida. Engaging with my videos boosts me further into the algorithm, which means more people will see my stuff. So, how do I feel about Farina? She's gonna be a top 3 character in the game, that's for damn sure. Joining Nahida and Kazuha on the Golden Thrones. I will absolutely be pulling for her for in-game testing, and also because Fontaine is not even close to done yet. And I figure she will only get better with time the more Fontaine characters we get. But with that being said, that'll be all from me. Peace.